Good evening and welcome to The Early Set. The Early Set is a weekly talk show dedicated to the artists who make live jazz happen here in New York and beyond and the ways in which those artists approach their music. I'm Gabrielle Stravelli. Uh, I'm a vocalist and songwriter based in New York City. Um, you can find out more about me. I'm not gonna go on too much about myself, but if you wanna find out more about me, uh, you can do that at my website, gabriellestravelli.com, which just appeared on the screen magically. Um, if you're viewing this on Facebook, you can follow me on Facebook, which is facebook.com um, slash Gabrielle Stravelli Music. And I'm gonna be back here on Facebook Saturday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, my husband is a bass player and we're gonna do a live concert. So do join me for that so we can get to know each other a little bit better. Um, if you're viewing this on YouTube, you can follow me. You can, I think if you're watching on YouTube, there's gonna be a little subscribe button below. So uh, follow me so that we can do this again. Um, today, I am so thrilled to uh, kick things off for the early set with two incredible vocalists. We've got Janice Siegel and Lauren Kinnan with us, um, two brilliant women, and I'm, I'm so excited to talk to them. Before we bring them on, I'm gonna do a, a quick shout out to two things uh, that I've been enjoying that I feel are important and worth mentioning right now. The first um, is, is a book that I, I highly recommend. Um, a lot of white people are looking for resources uh, right now, ways that they can engage um, and learn more and grow in this um, recent, you know, this new push for uh, racial equity in our country. And there have been a lot of... Um, Nonfiction books are uh, recommended, but I am I am submitting a recommendation that is a work of fiction tonight. It's called Americana, and it's by a, a writer named Shimananda Ngozi Adichie. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that correctly. Um, it came out in 2013, and I love this book. It tells the story of a young woman who um, is Nigerian. She immigrates to the U.S. and um, in coming to the US, she experiences what it's like to be a black person for the first time in her life. And so I recommend it because it's just a, a, a great way to immerse yourself in someone's you know life experience and worldview that may be different from yours. And also it's just a beautifully written book. It's a beautiful story. I, you're gonna fall in love with the characters, I think, as I did. Um, so I, I recommend that you check out Americana. And then the second thing I want to give a shout out to is a weekly online show called Billy's Place. Full disclosure, that's there's the logo that you will uh, see on Facebook. Full disclosure, this show uh, is the show of a dear friend of mine, Billy Stritch, uh, who is a pianist, singer, songwriter, arranger, um, just all around powerhouse talent and awesome person. He does this show, Billy's Place, uh, on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Billy Stritch. Um, sorry, I think that, that link, we have to fix that. Um, but if you just look him up, Billy Stretch on Facebook, you will find him. You'll see that logo. He does the show every week on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. And um, I recommend it truly, not just because I love him, but because it's like it, he's checking all the boxes. Um, he's his his skills as a pianist are on full display. He he's uh, plays beautiful uh, harmonic changes. He's extremely tasteful when he's reharmonizing something. You know he doesn't he doesn't go too far, but he offers sounds that you're not always accustomed to hearing uh, on on familiar tunes. And he makes beautiful seamless modulations. Uh, as a singer, he's just got beautiful phrasing, super swinging, and still tells the story. And, um, and the other thing I love about him is that he has this insane <laughs> knowledge of the American songbook um, and jazz repertoire. And so I guarantee that you, every week when I watch, I find that I discover some, some new tune that I wasn't familiar with. So do um, follow him on Facebook. Again, that's facebook.com slash Billy Stritch um, and catch him. He's on tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern at Billy's Place. So, so do, do follow that. 
We are this evening gratefully accepting your donations um, to my Venmo and my PayPal. Um, these donations help us play, uh, pay for this platform that we're broadcasting from. And we are going to donate a portion of the proceeds um, to a charity. This charity um, was chosen by Janice and Lauren, and I'm going to let them talk a little bit more about it when they come on in a minute. Um, but we are going to donate to, um, there's a guy named Greg Jaspers, who is biking for Black Lives Matter. He has a GoFundMe. Um, yeah, that's exactly what that GoFundMe page looks like. He has a goal of $10,000, and we would love to send him help make a dent in that goal that he is then going to donate to Black Lives Matter. So um, just know that uh, what you send to us tonight is going to help go to a really important cause right now. So we thank you in advance for that, if you are able. Janice Siegel and Lauren Kinnan are two pillars of the vocal jazz community. Uh, Janice is a founding member of the Manhattan Transfer, and Lauren is a 27, almost 28 year veteran of the vocal group, the New York Voices. And in addition to like having these incredible careers as part of these vocal groups, both of these women have had uh, extremely successful careers as solo artists. Without further ado, please help me welcome Janice Siegel and Lauren Kinnan. Hi! Hey. I can't thank you enough. I know I like said it a million times already and I'm just gonna keep thanking you for being here with us tonight. I'm so happy to have you both. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're quite welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm lo I love that you're doing this. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I can't imagine two better people to kick it off with. So um, yeah. we're gonna talk a little bit more about Vocal Gumbo, which is this online show you are, are co-hosting right now. But, but before we talk about it, you guys start by asking your guests three questions. So I thought it was only fair. <laughs> Oh! You don't have to answer these questions tonight. Damn, she turned um, the table. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Those are also they're great questions. And as a side note, I know I, I know that like these questions were crafted, you know, when it was just the pandemic happening before we got into this push for for racial equality. So you can adjust your answers as 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 you see fit. Um, but I'm gonna start with you, Lauren. Question number one, how are you coping with the pandemic slash what's your daily life like? Oh God, that is so funny, Gabrielle, because our, our often our guests kind of go, well, what, aren't you going to answer the questions? And we're always like, no, or we're not going to. Um, I mean, honest, honestly, we're, we're coping fine to the extent that, uh, you know, we're all, at home and my daughter is finishing up her freshman year, finished up her freshman year of college right. at home. And I haven't been home like this mm. for now going on 10 weeks. I've never been home this long. So I've gone through a lot of changes where initially I was like, wow, this is great. And I'm cooking and I'm, I'm cleaning and I'm nesting. And then, then Janice and I, you know, kind of got into vocal gumbo. And then you sort of, you know, you sort of ride these hills and valleys. So I guess I would say I've had some really profound lows as well, mm -hmm. which I think is important to talk about with people mm -hmm. that you just feel really like you just can't figure out what's wrong, but you just sort of have this heavy weight on your shoulders about the heaviness of the pandemic. And and now, of course, with with what we're seeing and the rising of of um, of the of the, the demonstrations and writing and fighting for e, uh, racial equality, that really has taken on a profound front line uh, place in in the way I think and navigate every day. So I think I'm like you. I'm figuring. I'm trying to figure out how to do better, be better, mm. be more pro proactive, make a difference, and 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 read and. So I'm, you know, for you, you're reading, I'm reading a book called um, White Fragility. And I've been that. finding I that oh, to be, yes. And I have that on, a on really, the order. It's That's blowing great. my mind. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, so, you know, just reading and reaching out to my friends to gain wisdom and, and just be better. So, so coping is like hills and valleys, mm -hmm. but trying to do the real, the real work um, that takes to have, you know, to have transformation. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you for talking about both of those things. Thank you so much. Um, Janice, yes. number two, what are you cooking? Oh, oh. <laughs> well, um, my son is here with me. Uh, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was he was just about to have his um, break from law school, and he was about to go visit his girlfriend in Russia. I mean, a day away from that. And then everything stopped and closed. And so he's here with me, uh, which is awesome. And he's um, <laughs> he's getting into the whole DIY thing. I mean, he's making cheese and he's making pickles. And I'm I'm more I'm yearning more for comfort food myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, it's not just not that easy to get ingredients mm -hmm. that I might be experimenting with. But uh, last night we decided to splurge, and Gabriel got three lobsters. I saw. Um, oh. And they were they were they were beautiful. They were about a, a pound and a half a piece. They were twelve dollars a piece. And we boiled them up, and we we uh, we got the meat out, and and then I made a stock. So that's going to be another two meals. Wow! Um, you know, we got. I'm going to make a zucchini risotto tonight, and then he's going to make lobster bisque. Sorry, oh <laughs> sorry, not <laughs> sorry. <laughs> totally, she's so rotten. I am. I'm bad to the bone. Just ah. rotten. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm living with a bunch of vegetables. I'm living with a bunch of vegetarians right now. They uh, both like. But you are not so, vegetarian, Lauren. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I say no. I mean, all it's all good for me. I love it. I'm, you know, I'm fine with it. But I mean, I do, I do miss cooking. You know, cooking my meat. So oh, I'm, definitely. I'm definitely. See, you're, I'm pining. you're in a good place to get fresh vegetables. Though. Yes. I'm. Yes, not. and fish. And fish, okay. yeah. I'm not yeah. really so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, right. I'm in the city, by the way. For uh, I mean, I'm I'm right in the middle of it, and you are too, uh, Gabrielle. Right? Yeah, as are we. And it and it's we're getting more fresh veggies now, but in the beginning, it was it, it, it there was much less of that. Yeah. 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 Excellent. All right, and I'm gonna let you you both answer this. Uh, <laughs> this question that I love that you guys came up with this. What's your COVID confession? <laughs> Go ahead, Lauren. Go ahead. Well, it's just really inconvenient to uh, shower and get dressed and put my face on. I really get grumpy about the whole thing now. I'm really comfortable with like, you know, just letting it, just no, going without makeup and you know, doing a, and just being really low key. And so I get really kind of crunchy, like, oh, I got a video of something. Oh, that means I have to put a face on and do my hair. Oh, mm -hmm. so I get <laughs> not happy about that at all. I mean, I'm really irritated. <laughs> so, so. We made you put on, on makeup and accessories. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Janice? Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, well, honestly, um, I mean, my hair's already gray. So I don't have that problem at all. I was ahead of the curve with that. Uh, I'm really loving letting my nails breathe for a minute, mm. you know, with no nail polish or anything. When I'm when I'm touring with the transfer, I'm I'm keeping the manicure going. Yeah. I'm also loving. I have to be honest. I'm loving farting. <laughs> at, at will. At I will. I could not I just, have dreamt of I a better answer. Let her rip. You know, my son, I he's very oh. polite. He doesn't say anything if he notices, but pew, it's really, really know. fun. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Good night, everybody. Just, Thank you for joining just, us. That's it. Morning. Goodbye. That's it. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Best uh, forever. I'm so glad I made you guys answer these questions now. Why am I glad? Oh my God. And I have to say, I agree with both of you. Mm. Thank you for that. Really? Right? Yeah. I, I, please. Um, Top, tops only. Tops only. No bottoms for sure. Yeah. Lack of pants and bra, I think, is a major 
theme of this of this uh, yeah. campaign. <laughs> Love it. I and dare. I dare us all to stand up right now. No, I dare. <laughs> I did put on pants. I am wearing pants right now. <laughs> but I'm not requiring anyone else. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So can you guys uh, correct me if I'm wrong? I believe that that Vocal Gumbo is sort of the online version of the monthly series that you were hosting in the before time in real life uh, called Vocal Mania. Yes. So can you guys tell me how Vocal Mania came to be? Sure. Um, it was ahead, it, it was really the uh, brainchild of Charles Carlini. Oh, okay. Who um, is a, a, a manager, gentleman of our acquaintance. Lauren's worked with him, and he, he does a lot of programming for uh, the Zinc Bar. Mm -hmm. And he approached uh, me first, maybe, or both of us at the same time, and and had this idea because he does the guitar series, the bass series, the drum series. At Zinc, he said he wants to do a vocal series. So he 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 uh, connected us, and he wanted us to curate it and sing in it. And <laughs> we, we just like ate it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And had you worked together before? Yeah, I mean, Janice and I have known each other for quite quite some time um, through New York Voices, but also through um, uh, other acquaintances like uh, a guitar Japanese guitarist Jiro Yoshida, who that put, was the who, first who time. These... Oh, oops, that's my nephew. Oops. Yeah. Go away. Go away. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We. It was a tribute to uh, a tribute to the Carpenters, and we met we met there, and then yeah. Janice and I tracked together on the uh, Bobby McFerrin vocabularies. Oh, okay. record basically just um, brought us both in to work together. And then the voices um, and the Manhattan Transfer uh, did some things. And then Janice asked me to join um, her vocal trio that was uh, with uh, Laurel Massé. And once upon a time, it was Laurel Massé, you and Cheryl Benteen, right? Yeah. And, the women, and then when the Cheryl- the Manhattan <clears throat> Transfer, basically. Right. And so we've kind of been dancing with each other for, for quite some time. And I, I think through all those things, we also just share a very similar spicy spirit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because we're the altos in our band and we're just a little bit more like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah, I don't, <clears throat> I don't know, but, uh, but our personalities also really clicked. We both love making food. We're both passionate about our families and our, you know, I don't know. It just, we just had this real, really beautiful connection and it has continued to kind of just thread us together, you know, yes. just opportunities kept sort of bringing us together. And, and so it's just been a, a beautiful uh, friendship that's continued to be both, both a, a friendship and, and, and a, and a working relationship. And, and, it, and we both really ha make a lot of space for each other uh, in it. And so it's just really been quite, quite lovely. Hmm. I agree. And, and then how did vocal gumbo happen? Who, who had that idea? Well, the second this thing <clears throat> happened, really, we were, you know, we were just about, we were already planning a fabulous vocal mania with, I think it was Alicia Olatucci. Hmm. Yeah. Olatucci. Yeah. Olatucci. Yeah. And we had everything planned and then this hit and Lauren and I, I think it was just spontaneous yeah it, it took a while to get together honestly as you know we're all of a sudden where everyone is called to be not only musicians but engineers and lighting mm -hmm. designers and and uh, you know makeup artists mm -hmm. and, you know and you have to be video editors and you know it, it, it took a, it took a while to get it together um I've been I, I've these vocal gumbos are so beautiful. Um, if you're watching at home and you haven't seen them, so first of all, when you're done here, make sure you follow Vocal Gumbo on Facebook. You can find it at um, facebook.com slash vocal gumbo. Thank you. Lovely banner. Um, <laughs> um, it's just, I am amazed by the like, <laughs> 
production values. Because we are too. It's a production. We are too. Yes. Multiple collaborations with multiple artists and interviews. I mean, it seems like it's a lot of work. It is. You know, Gabrielle, honestly, we we've we've learned from every show. We're all, we've only done three episodes, right? And so every show showed us things that needed to improve, but also mm -hmm. marks that we felt like we were hitting. Okay. And and I think because again, perhaps born out of the spirit where Janice and I are a little bit, I don't know if it's just our own place where we are in our life, but we're just winging it. We are just like throwing that football <laughs> along and we're like, we don't care. We don't care if we don't know, cause we're gonna figure it out. Mm -hmm. and, and we're leading with our taste and our hearts and our passion and our aesthetic. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and we have an incredible work ethic because that's what you need to even exist in this industry. But I think through every show, we've learned a little something. And um, so we keep keep trying to strive and develop it. And I think it's, it's blossoming. Um, and, you know, we hope to have it continue, but we didn't know, whoa, we didn't know that, um, that we were gonna be really doing full fledged, you know, recording in our homes and, and writing arrangements on the fly and doing all that, but, we, but we're really loving it. Good. Yeah, and we've had some help. We've had uh, a couple of partners, women, we have a producer, uh, as you do, mm -hmm. Lori, Lori Green, who's gotten into video editing herself. And we originally had a partner, Jackie uh, Otano, who did some video editing and now is off doing her own project. So, okay. you know, it, between the three and four of us, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, so much fun. I'm going to ask our uh, producer, Julie Garnier, um, just in case anybody hasn't seen Vocal Gumbo, we're going to roll um, a short clip of, of one of your recent collaborations, this beautiful collaboration uh, between you two and uh, Kate McGarry and Keith Gans on this song, The Times They Are a Changing. So we're going to roll that right now. Admit that the waters around you have grown And accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone If your time to you is worth saving You better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone For the times, they are a-changing Changing And critics who prophesize with your pen And keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again Don't speak too soon, for the wheel's still in spin And there's no telling who that is naming For the loser now will be later to win Times they are a changing, changing. Hey, 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 come senators and congressmen, please heed the call. Please heed the call. Stand in the doorway, don't plug up the hall For he who gets hurt will be he who has stalled There's a battle outside and it's raging It will soon shake your windows It will rattle your walls For the time Oh my god! 
<laughs> so beautiful. And for people who are watching, that is obviously not the full video. We're limited to uh, the length of a video that we can show here on the platform that we're streaming for. But please go to the Vocal Gumbo Facebook page. Yeah, it's on there now. Great. And watch the whole yeah. video because it's just so beautiful. You, I imagine you are extremely proud of that effort. It's just beautiful. Well, it's fun. Let's talk about how it happens. Please. Let's talk yeah. about Why it. Why you start? Okay, so of course, Kate McGarry and Keith submitted that, that track and that video. And what's been really fun about this process is um, Janice and I both go to our studios and we start writing. And we kind of write right in the dark to the extent that like we haven't really been talking about our plan. And so I write, I write my own ideas and then Janice did. And we literally, that was the first time where we laid Janice's ideas on, and my ideas together on the track. and. And it was almost like Janice filled in the spaces that I left and I filled in the spaces oh, wow. she left. And we we were weeping. We were literally yeah. weeping because it was so emotional because the piece is emotional. Mm -hmm. But then to also feel like you're literally finishing each other's musical sentences. Mm -hmm. um, I, so I, I think we were so oh, really emotional about that. And then, of course, we were so grateful to Kate and Keith for allowing us to play so freely with it and that they were happy with it was also a bonus. And then of course, Lori Green, um, our producer on our show, Vocal Gumbo, did the video editing, which again, she's learning how to video edit, right? I'm learning how to, Janice is learning, and we're all learning. And so that's her beautiful film of just footage that we grab from the streets or from our friends. Well, we asked uh, people, uh, the, our, I saw our drummer, our drummers, one of our drummers posts, Russ Peterson, Leah Delaria uh, gave something. I took some footage. Lauren took some footage. Oh, wow. Uh, it's it's just so moving and powerful, says Gloria Stromelli. <laughs> is she related Yay. to you? Oh, is that mom. Mama Bear? Hi, Mom. Hi, mom. Hey, mom. Thanks, mom. Up, oh, oh. vocal gumbo is so Woo. great. Yes, it is. You know, for me, uh, hi, Jeff. That was exquisite. For me, because I'm older than both of you, that was the song that was deep in my my uh, teen years. Mm. You know, that was a song I played on guitar and sang, wow. and went to Washington Square Park and sang, and. You know, that's that that moved my generation in a big, big way. And to re-sing it now was astoundingly powerful. For mm. Me. Mm. And what and a heartbreaking and heartbreaking. And, heartbreaking. and, heartbreaking. Right. and it's mm -hmm. so goddamn relevant uh -huh. and it's infuriating. So so I think we're all putting all that passion into our music and every show. We actually have a show coming up on Saturday, same time as yours, our talk show format, our cocktail hour. Oh, right. And we have, and we have Miss Dee Dee Bridgewater coming on awesome. uh, uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Ann Hampton Calloway. And, this is and the other, there's another surprise besides Alexia, by the way, that you don't even oh. know about. <laughs> what? So, in so we're, and we have found, like you, Gabrielle, that talking is as important right now as making music. Mm -hmm. And so we've we've continued to feel that 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 is the perhaps a, an important thing that needs to happen. So I think this is great that you're creating that platform, and I think we all need to be talking talking some ourselves through the through what this uh, extraordinary time. Yeah, and I, I think I wrote this to you when I reached out that I had watched the, so there's Vocal Gumbo Cocktail Hour. Yes. And then right. there's the proper Vocal Gumbo episode, right? Right, That's yes. Correct. Yeah, the Cocktail um, Hour really is to promote the episode, but it's also more talk. Yeah, and and I watched um, I watched the the previous one, and I I told you guys when I reached out to you about doing this that like you had you had Leah Delaria and Diane Reeves on, and the way you held space for Diane Reeves was so beautiful to watch. It was just a beautiful example, and it was so great to like watch you guys do that and to listen to her and hear about her experiences as a as a black woman. It was just I yeah. was really really just moved and impressed by it, and like. 
Props to you guys for that. Do you have a date? So the cocktail hour is this Saturday, and then is the the vocal, next vocal gumbo episode. Do you have a date set for that when that's going to premiere? When is that? Uh, yeah, the twenty seventh, June twenty oh. seventh. June at what time? Uh, at five p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's okay. a week from this Saturday. Great. Okay, so next Saturday <coughs> at five p.m. Eastern, there's going to be the full episode of Vocal Gumbo. Um, fantastic. Can you guys, um, we've, we've actually like reached the half hour mark. I, I there's a couple of questions that I still want to get to, um, with you, but before we move on, can you guys just, um, tell the people at home this cause that we're donating to Greg Jasper's ja Sure. Jaspers, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. Greg Jaspers runs the vocal jazz program at Western Michigan University. He is one of the premier vocal jazz educators out there. Um, and New York Voices, um, we our vocal jazz summer camp is housed at Western Michigan University now. It wasn't always. Okay. And Greg has been um, sort of a partner in that with us anyway. He's an amazing human being, an amazing educator. And right now he's out there biking um, to raise money for uh, Black Lives Matter and the NAACP and all the monies are going to go to um, to that organization and they're trying to raise 10 grand and they and and there's three people I think that are out there to collectively and they're biking about a thousand miles and they've they're over six thousand dollars raised but I guess you know there's so many things that we could do to raise money but I thought per it's fun to have a personal mm -hmm. um, uh, thing at, to be connected to and, and supporting our people that are literally out there putting pedal to the metal for yeah. the cause. <laughs> Quite literally. Yeah. And, and if you're watching, um, our, our executive director, Julie Garnier, um, she's got that ticker tape going at the bottom that just shows, um, the Venmo and the PayPal address. You're going to, you guys will send those to me. And then Julie and I are going to forward on a portion to Greg on this very important cause. Thank you. That he's Thank raising. You. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you guys chose that. It's just, we're so happy to um, make a contribution to that. So thank you. Um, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time, but I definitely had questions, more nitty gritty questions about singing. I just want to ask a couple of them because um, they're just burning inside me. Um, <laughs> this, I, I'd love to know, and, I, and I'm happy for you both to answer this, um, or if one of you wants to feel this, what is your take on, um, is it important for singers? I was framing this as a, regarding to jazz music, in any music, is it important for singers to honor the melody as written by the composer when they are interpreting music? Janice, why don't you go? <laughs> I think it is important. I think it's important. I mean, I'm not a composer, really, but I think it's important at least once, <laughs> at least once, to honor the melody, because that's what the writer intended. That's mm -hmm. how he or she heard it the first time. And then I think it's fair game. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Lauren, you're a star. You work a lot as a songwriter. So, I mean, do you have personal feelings? about that in, in terms of your own melodies and you both teach at a very high yeah. level so i was curious to know what you know what you impart to your students in in that subject yeah absolutely i mean it's so essential that we know from whence the music comes and and i think um you know it's it's fun to see our our students work and play and play outside the lines i definitely remember being that girl <laughs> and totally not appreciating when anybody said to me, well, you know, you, that's not the melody. And I'm like, yeah, but this is what I feel, or this is what I'm feeling, you know, and I totally remember that girl and I'm still a really close relative to her anyway. But, but I think, yes, I think it's essential. I think it's essential to state it. Um, it doesn't have to be with, with it, within the inch of its life, mm -hmm. but it has to be there. Ha the bones have to be there. And then, yeah, I do believe that you you absolutely should go off and try and, and mine your own experience in the music. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big pro proponent 
of that, of asking, you know, any of my students or asking that of myself to, to dig deep and find the things that make your expression of, especially a standard, w relevant and meaningful uh, in, in the moment because um, so many people have done them so well, right? So what is your point of view? So I, I, I do really support the notion of, of exploring. So I'm gonna uh, ask you to kind of expand on that either of you or both of you in that. So let's say you are learning a standard that is new to you and you learn the melody as written, but then how do you develop your own version of it? What does that involve? Go ahead, Lauren. Janice, do you want, okay. Um, <laughs> I'll go next, I'll go well, next. Yeah, I mean, I think initially it's about, I probably go and listen to a, a handful of versions, whether it's vocalists, um, and instrumentalists, and I might start, you know, just listening and finding things that I go that right there, or mm. that's really cool, or that, you know, and kind of try and find some things that that light light my own sort of um, creative muse up. Um, a lot of times after that, I might be asking, what what could I do to um, to to bring myself to it? Sometimes it's just honoring the song, and nothing needs to change. And other times mm. it's like. Is it a groove change? Do I need, should it, could it be reharmed? Uh, could I change meters here? Could I modulate? So I ask a lot of those questions, but it's always through the lens of like, you know, what's wanted, right, in the music, mm. what feels authentic and genuine to, to you in the song. And I think you learn through doing, and sometimes you get it wrong. Like sometimes you really, really, change something to so so much that people just don't appreciate it or 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 it's actually just not really that happening um or other times that exploration really really brings forth something that's really personal and um and compelling so um it's part of the work of just listening trying exploring going too far willing to edit your own ideas and and finally coming up with something that feels really really substantial in your own vision. That was a really good answer. It was. <laughs> um, Janice, I'm actually gonna, so I'm gonna I'll ask this question of you specifically, because you know, I was reading about both of you and listening to your albums and I read that, you know, you grew up not necessarily immersed in jazz. You were, and you were singing pop music and folk music. And I'm curious to know specifically for jazz, how did you dig deep into that tradition? You know, is it analytical? Is it transcribing stuff? Is it just listening a bajillion times? Is it a combination of both? What, what was that like for you? Well, it's, I didn't grow up with jazz at all. Okay, who I were mean, you, what, what were you listening to? As a child, my parents were not, music uh, aficionados particularly, mm -hmm. really. Uh, we listened to AM radio. <laughs> and, in, and in those days, a AM radio was pretty broad. I mean, mm. you, heard, you heard all the great American songbook singers, Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra, Stephen Eady, you know, Sammy Davis Jr., um, all the Italian singers mm -hmm. in New York, certainly. Uh, you heard instrumentals from all over the world, uh, and you heard pop music, the Beatles and well, the whole British explosion. But I uh, started singing folk music and harmony and pop music. I'm a pop singer, really. Mm -hmm. I didn't really start to get into jazz till I was in college, and I wasn't a music major in college. Uh, but I listened to instrumentals. Okay. That's how I got into it, and I liked, at, at the age I was, I was attracted to the energy of free jazz and improvisation and angular kind of energetic things like Monk and uh, Archie Shepp and Pharaoh Sanders. And, and it really <clears throat> wasn't until I met Tim Hauser that I got into vocal jazz okay. and I started listening to singers. I would say I absolutely immersed myself in listening. And 
Uh, I analyzed. I, I did. I did analyze and singing vocalese. I think is a very important part of my education. Okay. Because that way you get inside the mind of the great improvisers. Mm -hmm. You really viscerally understand what it's like to be to be in Coleman Hawkins' horn and <laughs> have him, and playing body and soul. It's like, oh, he did this here and that there and. I really, really listened heavily, heavily, and I still have a, a very extensive uh, vinyl collection. Um, so, also making a lot of mistakes because I, <laughs> because I got yes. I, I, that's I got how you in, learn. Yeah, I got interested in improvisation, and I just couldn't freaking figure it out, hmm. you know. And the only way you do it is getting on that stage and failing and just falling flat on your face and then going home and all right, I guess I should shed this tune a little more or, hmm. and John Hendricks was one person that pushed me to do that. I mean, I was terrified and he would also always make me go like do a solo freaking after him. It's like, come on. <laughs> no one wants to follow him. No one would want no. to follow him. No one well, should follow him except maybe Dave Lambert, you know, <laughs> but no. Wow. But what a great way to push you into the deep end, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. It was the deep end. I mean, learn by doing. Sing everything, every anytime you get an opportunity, really. Um, Something that I have found lately as I'm working and the teaching work that I do, people have lots of questions and this is so specific, but I'm so delighted to pick your two brains about this. When it comes to scat singing syllables, <laughs> you know, how do you choose those syllables? There are certain syllables there, you know, you hear it, that there are certain people you listen to them and it sounds so instrumental, it just sounds right. And then Sometimes it doesn't. So how how do you develop that for yourself? Well, I think you have to find the things that also um, come easily to your own mouth and your own mechanism, mm -hmm. right? So if you're not gonna if you're not gonna you know do uh, uh, tongue tonguing exercises that the trombone player does or the trumpet player does, those types of things that they're doing um, in their exercise work are the are it builds up their musculature with their with their tongue and in their mouth so that's why you know even those when they step out and and sing uh sing versus play an improvisation it just sounds so connected to the instrument you, you don't even care whether or not it's like a perfect sounding voice because they're making the changes it's it's rhythmically interesting it's it sounds really earthy and and instrumental so you know i think i think you got to find ways in which whatever syllables that that you are able to execute they feel natural in your mouth and a way to execute and deliver the line instrumentally rhythmically and sonically and the more fussy you get like if you if you verge on like the eddie jefferson lyric way of, of singing a, a scat syllable you better have your shit together <laughs> You better, you better have your story together. You better have your instrumental chops so solid. Or even John Hendricks or Dave Lambert, when they did funny things with their sounds and quirky stuff, you have to already own that lane so much so that when you do do something really purposeful, that it makes sense in in that way as opposed to just being like some dwee dot do dot dow you know thing that you're like that doesn't that's not doesn't feel really authentic so i think s keeping it simple and and finding things really earthy and connected to the instrumental vibe is is the best thing and and save the really squeedly hoodly things that people do sometimes save that for when you're really feeling a, a lot more sure-footed in your in your concepts okay it's very very difficult to find your <clears throat> own language i mean singers the improvising singers have to do that <clears throat> Out of, out of everything else they have to do, they also have to find an authentic language for themselves. Hmm. And um, everyone, I mean, that I've had the pleasure and honor of working <laughs> with, from Eddie Jefferson, <laughs> Eddie go. Jefferson to uh, John Hendricks, uh, to Mark Murphy, to, I mean, every one of those people have their own language. Hmm. 
And you have to find yours. I mean, and one good way to start is by imitation. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Ella, yeah. you know, I am, I mean, Ella, Ella in the mirror, Ella learning Ella's uh, how I the move learning, you know, Aretha Franklin in the, in the mirror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, imitation. Also, I think it, it grows those neural pathways. Hmm. Do you think it's important for singers to, to know, um, like, is it a requirement? Do you think singers, you gotta learn the harmonic changes as well, or is it okay, you know, if people don't read music? Or I, I you know, I feel like I, I know a lot of great singers who really run the gamut in terms of working in that sort of technical way. And I'm, I'm just curious to know what your opinions are. You gotta know the changes. Whether you read music yeah. or not, it there's a lot of really how. great. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. However, you yeah. get there, you get there, but it's fine. Yeah. You got to get there. <laughs> you got to get there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I don't remember uh, Nancy King. I don't know that she necessarily read music, but she hang, hung so hard with the instrumentalists. Mm, she I was like it. sitting right next to the, the horn players. Um, Greta Matassa, who's from the Northwest, she is a badass singer improviser and i don't think she reads music but she knows those changes okay. inside out john, upside down john mm -hmm. hendrix didn't read music john right right okay. so but you do have to know the changes and know the roadmap <clears throat> awesome and also i think another this is why it's important for singers to listen to instrumentalists if you're going to improvise too because there are certain as lauren was saying there's certain techniques that trumpet players use, that saxophone players use, the triplet feel, the, mm -hmm. the triplet riffs, you know, that kind of, the triple tonguing that that trumpet players do. It's it's I have a trumpet book of exercises right on my piano right now. I mean, it's really valuable. Okay. Um this is, you guys are amazing. I just want to check in with you because it's 647. People in the chat are saying, keep talking, but I want to make sure you guys can, are able to do that. I'm not trying to hold uh, you. Let right. me see. You have, uh, do, you, do you have any place to be, Janice? I think I, I was going to go get a margarita for the street, but no, I can wait. No, I, can, I, I have to make dinner. So, <laughs> I know I mean, that. Well, there is that. All. all right. We're going we're gonna to do yeah. a couple more questions. We'll have to have you back on because <laughs> we could go on and on. We could. Um, I think um, something that really struck me uh, listening to the albums that you guys have both put out as solo artists and um, something I noticed about both vocal groups was that you pull material from many different genres. You are more than jazz vocal groups in so many ways. And I love that. And the thing that really struck me was that you guys are able to do that, but these albums still sound like cohesive statements. And I'm just curious to know what the process is when you're choosing material. How do you do that? Is it a theme? <laughs> is it a, you know, I mean, I, if if it, if you're able, uh, if it happens accidentally, I don't know if that's okay. Listen, if that's we can tell you, but we'd have to kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what because it's two different worlds. Like the the process of a of a of a band has a has a process in the way in which they arrive at at, at deciding you know, here's a project we're going to do versus a solo artist. I get to kind of, you know, I still have to come up with my own themes and the, and the ways in which I want to convey music. Um, but in both lanes, I do feel like if you manage um, all things, uh, if, if you're the through line for the story, whether you're bouncing around from Stevie Wonder to, to Round Midnight, uh, um, <laughs> that the with with that you know the group is kind of the, the the thread the needle and the thread and you sort of sort of thread your story and the and the group is a continuous sound right mm -hmm. and so um it's our job to kind of pace it and maybe uh shape it in a certain way we've done our fair share of like here's a theme record it's a big band record it's all swing and then we what we've more often done is here's a really eclectic record of all the things that we really like and 
And I know we've shot ourselves in the foot at least a half a dozen times because we've done it that way, but it's the way in which we honor the group most profoundly because the group isn't interested in just being a swing band or just being, um, you know, a bebop band or just being an original songwriting band or a Brazilian band. We like it all. And so the only way to make everybody happy is to do a little bit of everything. And that's just how it rolls for us. Um, why do you and so, and go ahead? I'm yeah. just so curious to know why you say you know you've shot yourself in the foot sometimes by doing that. What is what does that mean? Well, I just think the industry, at least back when there was a different industry, when there were record companies and there were a whole there was a whole other machine, everybody likes everything tied up in a nice, neat little bow so that your marketing and your PR people can go, we know we're taking it to this lane and we know and we've got our elevator you know, synopsis of like what this record is and everybody needs to have it all so buttoned up. And um, and I just don't find that to be really compelling artistically for me personally. And I don't, um, but that is kind of the way it, it would often work. There were long round tables in those, you know, record companies in the sky and everybody would really have to talk about the theme and all that stuff. And, and we were just a little bit, you know, we weren't always able to really do that. Yes, we did our tribute to Paul Simon and we did, but more often than not, if we did a theme record with the next record had to be something where we messed our hair up again, because we were just like, <laughs> we just have to, you know? So, you know, I just don't know, but yeah, you, you back in the day, you know, it, it, there was, it was definitely, I felt there was more pressure to have those things really thoughtfully organized. Well, and, when there was yeah. radio, there was actual radio. It was more important. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to speak on that, Janice, at all? Well, uh, let me just say that the original concept of the Manhattan Transfer was to bring four part harmony back into popular music. So we didn't want to be labeled like like Lauren is saying. We didn't want to be a jazz vocal group. We didn't mm -hmm. want to be a pop group. We just wanted to experiment with different styles of American music hmm. and bring that four-part harmony so a sound back, whether it was gospel like Operator or it was Alan Toussaint, we did a cappella on the first record. Or the first record was madly, madly eclectic. Mm -hmm. So that's always been our MO. Um, it's easier when there is a theme. Mm -hmm. I mean, it certainly is, if it's the Chick Corea songbook. <laughs> Uh, for instance, or um, we really have, or the symphony album, uh, say, at least there's some kind of guiding li uh, light of, uh, of, of personnel. It's going to be a symphony record. All right, so we have to pick tunes that are going to fit into that. Mm -hmm. But um, also the process of picking material is very different for a group than for soloists. Exactly. First of all, <clears throat> I mean, with the group, everybody's got to be happy like Lauren is saying, you really, really want that. You want everyone to feel fulfilled, not overlooked. You want everyone seen. You want everybody to have their creative input. When it's you, when it's yourself, things have to speak to you in a much more personal way. And it's a much more expressive medium to do a solo record. You know? Yeah. Uh, I always like to say a happy group is a happy group. Right. That's right. I mean, That's so right. it's so it's so absurd, but it's just like you know, it's it's either going to live a long, healthy, happy life, or everybody's going to be you know, Miserable. unhappy in some in some way or another because their needs aren't being met. So it's you you definitely learn the art of sharing and communicating um, when you lived in a vocal group as long as or a band as mm. long as we have, and. Um, and so that's, I treasure those skills that I've developed, but I also absolutely need to feed my own creative muse often and frequently. Um, nobody and happy if mama ain't happy. <laughs> yeah, you know, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's true. Awesome. We are approaching the one hour mark. So I... I am gonna bring you, you ladies, back on at some point because there is so much okay. we didn't get to. But 
we got to get dinner on the table <laughs> and all of that. And and you've been so kind to to give us your time this evening. Um, so I'm going to thank you one more time tonight. I'm going to remind the folks who are watching um, to go and follow Vocal Gumbo at facebook.com slash Vocal Gumbo. Um, please if you are able to, whatever you are able to, you can send donations to uh, my Venmo and PayPal that you can see on the screen there because we are gonna donate to Greg Jasper's bike bike ride for a fundraiser for Black Lives Matter and the NAACP. Please help us support a beautiful cause. Um, and I just thank you both so much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell everybody um, who's on next week, but please help me thank one more time. You guys, your goddesses, <laughs> thank you so much for this amazing conversation, Janice Siegel and Lauren Kinnan. Mwah! Love thank you. you. you did thank a great you job, by so the way. Much. Thank, yes. you. Can we, thank you. Can, can I just say, please do support Gabrielle and her endeavors. It's so important for our, our music community to find the support right now. And so know that it's important. It's a really beautiful thing to just recognize, small or large, the gesture is really appreciated um, for our dear colleagues here in their new program. You're the best. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Thank you so much again for joining us tonight, those of you at home watching. Um, please do follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Gabrielle Stravelli Music. And you can also, um, if you're watching on YouTube, just click below, click that subscribe button um, so that you'll know when we're on next. We are back next week. This is happening every week, Wednesday uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern moving forward. Our guest next week is so incredible. You're going to love him. He is Damien Sneed. Uh, a man I've had the great pleasure of working with. He's a pianist, singer, conductor, composer, and he works in many musical worlds, jazz, gospel, and classical music. So please join me next week when I'm gonna have Damien Sneed on. I wanna thank Julie Garnier. <laughs> I'm pointing at the sky because it feels like she's just um, in the heavens somewhere. Um, but she is the brilliant person making all these things appear on the screen. Um, so. Thank you, Julie. And thanks to Jim Caruso and the crew at Birdland. Uh, Jim came up with this idea and encouraged me to do it. And the folks at Birdland, you know, are helping me to promote things. So we thank them. You guys, I want to see you here next week. Same time, same place. In the meantime, have a great week. Stay strong, stay safe, stay engaged, take care of each other. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.